ain't no green. Yeah, sing it real quick. Let's kick it off with a theme song. Hold my body down. Perfect. That's enough. We'll get DMCA'd. All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Birth Black Hats, a live playthrough of Blades in the Dark. This is session number two. Uh, for anybody who may have missed the first session, it is available in our VODs right now for at least another couple of weeks, I'd hope. Um, and eventually we'll have this up on YouTube. Uh, just to take a quick second for introductions, my name is, well, it's referred to as Stat, mostly Statly. I will be your host in your GM for this session. Uh, I'm in the center of the screen uh, to this corner, which I'm not even going to try and put a cardinal on. I'm just going to point. Um, in this corner, we have Bilbo, who will be playing Vidar. Uh, directly above me, we have Hammy, who will be playing Cormac. In this corner, we have Jacob, who will be playing Ben. On this side, over here, we have Kyle, who will be playing Cobb. Over here, we have Trevor, who will be playing Cassius. And not pictured below me, we have Jacqueline, who will be playing Madame Corvus. Um, you have to pay extra to get my webcam footage. <laughs> yeah, nothing for free from the <laughs> oh, Madame. Only, only um, fan. Now, I'd like to begin with just a quick session recap for session one for anybody that uh, may have missed it, and also just to re jog everyone's memory. Uh, a lot of stuff happened, so I think it's good to begin with the recap. Um, in our very first session, uh, we led off with Cobb and Ben going to see Madame Raz, a, uh, a Taishirosi soothsayer over in the merchant district of the city. Now, uh, Madame Raz has been avoiding Ben and continue to do so, but she did speak with Cobb briefly um, and sort of get a sense of some weird haunting that Cobb has. Cobb also had a really weird experience with his demon bane charm around um, Ben. So there was some interest, intrigue there going on. Uh, not too long after, and after a little bit of planning on the fortunate scale, the lair that belongs to our lovely gang here, the Birth Black Hats, um, they decided to initiate their first score. Uh, and this was to try and gain some favor with some of the local factions in the docks where they've made their home and are hosting their Fright Nights, which are fights between ghosts. Um, the gang led off with Madame Corvus using her birds, her uh, employees at the brothel, the Gilded Plume, which is located in the Silkshore District. Um, to get some information about the Blue Coats and their work against the Grinders, a local faction in the docks, um, she found out that the, uh, or one of her birds found out that a Blue Coat had actually had a plan to try and attack the Grinders as they were doing sort of a pattern of raids across the docks district. Um, they use this. They tried to use this information to sway Chief Helker, uh, a notable figure in the dock and sort of the uh, the head of the dockers, if you will. Um, Helker didn't really want the information, uh, but because of a very cleverly placed uh, flashback by Cormac, uh, they were able to still strike up a deal with some sway checks from Cassius as well. Um, the deal being that uh, Chief Helker would not uh, go against their gang. He would turn a blind eye to some of their nightly activity, if you will, um, and also gave them a warehouse where they could host the fight, seeing as the first place they hosted a Fright Night was not a good one from an occult perspective, as Cobb informed them. Um, something about Viath and Blood uh, sort of making it a little bit easier to enrage the ghost and get out of hand. Um, afterwards, uh, Vidar and Cassius pounded some pavement and tried to find the Grinders. Uh, they were able to locate Cersei, the second in command of the Grinders. Um, Cassius practiced a little bit of code switching, uh, dropping some of his noble speech to speak plainly to the, uh, the docker types and the, uh, the scov that are in the area, um, through a triple six sway check, um, <laughs> which was insane. Um, Cassius, Cassius was able to strike up quite a favorable deal with Cersei. Um, in exchange for the information about the Blue Coat raids against the Grinders, they were able to earn three rooks from the uh, three of Cersei's rooks, actually, to work and help with protection during their rackets or whatever the gang sees fit for. And uh, another blind eye. The, do the Grinders will not work against um, the Birth Black Hats at least the ones that belong to Cersei. There is another leader in the faction named Hutton, who is an unknown here and working with Alf Ironborn in the area. Um, in downtime, uh, some people indulge in their vices, some people trained. One notable thing I want to say is that Cormac spent a coin to from the crew to try and spruce up the warehouse, make it fit, a, you know, bleacher, seats, um, you know, a place to place bets within the uh, warehouse to try and turn it into more of a functioning gambling den. Um, so that was that was done over downtime and over the past 48 hours. Um, in ICC, uh, Ben disappeared for about two days. Um, <laughs> we'll learn a little bit more about that. Um, 
And Cobb, Vidar, and Cassius worked on a new plot to try and procure some new corpses to find some more ghosts to fight. Um, per the agreement of the Hawkers that they're doing right now with these fights, they let ghosts who win leave, and the ghosts who lose the fights sort of die and evaporate within the ring. Um, so they are currently without any stock to run their gambit. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's a full recap of both Session 1 and ICC, uh, which is our in-character chat feature that we use in our Discord for the viewers at home. Um, before we dive into the session, uh, players, I would like to try something. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to keep doing this. Um, it's sort of an attempt at characterization. Um, I have sort of, similar to our Session Zeros, prepared a quick scene for each of you to go through. Um, my goal here is for this to be no longer than five minutes. Um, so just a quick little conversation to sort of drop you into your character a little bit. Um, so bear with me. If you think it's something that's not right for your character, we can go back to it later. Um, but this would have happened sometime during the ICC. Since our downtime was a little light these past two days, I figured we could do some scenes like this. Um, so yeah, we'll just give it a shot. Um, and viewers or players, if you like it, we can do it again. If not, we can go to a characterization question or something else. But I just wanted to give it a shot. Um, so Cobb, I'm going to start with you. Uh, so you, uh, during your downtime mentioned that you spent some work with the gondoliers, um, one of the factions in the city that is responsible for taking care of the many corpses that are dropped in the canals and things like that. Uh, you have a friend Edric, I believe, right? Uh, I would just like to go through a quick conversation with Edric, um, and see what you might've said to him sometime during that downtime. Um, and you guys just met somewhere in the street, somewhere comfortable that for you, to, as comfortable as Cobb could be out in the street. Um, and just wanted to see, <laughs> yeah, just wanted to see what you might have said. Uh, so Edric, um, similar to you, a silk son, um, he is dressed in a black coat and a hat, um, you know, has a, a, a dueling cane that he walks around with, nothing fancy, very, uh, very rudimental, um, sort of a mark of a gondolier. Um, and he meets with you. He goes, so hey, Cole, how you doing, mate? It's been a minute since I've seen you. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, uh, hi, hi, Edric. Uh, how's uh, how's the how's the Marigold doing? You been you been in to see him lately? Yeah, I seen your mom not too long ago. She's doing well. Um, wanted to see uh if the business was still doing business, and it is. They're you know they're doing pretty good over there in Silk Shore. That's good to hear. Good to hear. I mean, so I guess sometimes I worry with uh, everything going down in the crow's foot and all that. Uh, you know, crow's or uh, silk song. Maybe I, I hope none of it spills over. Silk song ain't got too many allies around, but I suppose everyone needs to get their rocks off sometime. So maybe they're safer than I think. Right. It's not so bad over there, honestly. <laughs> I mean, silk shore has got its problems, but you know, I, most of the bodies we're seeing are in crow's foot. You know, and those canals are almost clogged with them. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, funny thing about that sort of thing. <laughs> what you Listen, mean? I, well, this, uh, this, uh, this Waylon thing. Remember, I was telling you about. Right. Yeah. This, uh, well, I'm not sure you heard, but the blue coats came in and 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 smashed the whole thing up. Uh, he waved some paper around, took the coin, took everything that weren't nailed down, and uh, oh, that's bad luck, well, mate. That's bad luck. <laughs> and but, well, those of us who stuck around from the thing, we're uh, we're working a different business now, down in the docks, you know, just doing what we can for a couple coins. Oh yeah, what what you doing, mate? Gambling? <laughs> we run a gambling <laughs> ring for the grinders. <laughs> oh, you run a gambling ring? Oh well, I'm more of a behind-the-scenes kind of guy, but right, uh, right. using uh, your ghost talk, yeah, yeah, something like that. Anyway, some one of them, uh, someone I met in the venture, was telling me that uh, you gotta take risks for this sort of thing, and I, I guess, uh, I guess I believed him. Okay, well, hey. Don't hurt yourself, Cobb. I want you to be safe out there. <laughs> I don't want another oh, yeah. silk sun coming up dead. Yeah, right. Uh, well, you, you know, it's uh, it, it's a funny old thing. You should mention something like that. And and we was just talking about the crow's foot and all that too. I uh, I think we're gonna be doing a spot of business in the foot. That's a bad. Soon. That's a bad idea, Cobb. 
Right, right. Good, right. Yeah. And I, I tried to tell him that. Believe me, I did. I said every which way that going in the crow's foot is, is dumb fucking business. But uh, but they weren't hearing it. Um, and so I was wondering if you if you boat boys, you, you gondoliers had, a, a, you know, a little something to, to keep the evil out, that sort of thing, given what you do and, and all that. You know, just a little something from one silk sun to another and ain't nobody gotta know just you know well, i can't say too much Cobb. you know they trust me and all that i'm pretty low in the gang they don't teach me all the methods but we've got uh we got a ritual you know to uh sort of pertain the ghosts and i, I think i could tell you a little bit about it um let me uh let me get you a tome and I'll, I'll be right back and i can teach you a little bit about what we do to keep the ghosties at bay thanks mate i appreciate it excellent uh, next, we will go to Cassius. Uh, Cassius, you are at the Lucky Owl. Um, Aunt Cassandra's, or Aunt Cass, what would you prefer? Aunt Cass? Aunt, yeah, Aunt Cassandra, Aunt Cass, that's kind of just my nickname, I guess. Okay. But... Yep, Aunt Cassandra is there. You are, uh, this is one of, maybe in the morning before the uh, the inn gets too busy, um, and you're having, you know, whatever co constitutes coffee. In, the, in blades you know, shine. Some, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shine. all right at least that's what she's having you're more than welcome to drink shine or whatever you would be but a morning drink and uh she looks you up and down and she's like well you look quite tired cassius have you been out late recently um tired's an understatement oh i hope you're not up to some of these old gambits that you used to be doing come you don't look bloodied or bruised but i know that you and your silver ton running around causing trouble with your friends well, not being bloodied is the preferred outcome. <laughs> See, sometimes I don't believe you when you say that. I don't either. What have you been up to recently, then, if you're not being bloodied, like you used to be? <sighs> I've gotten into some more honest ventures, compared to what I've normally been out to. Honest ventures? I'm a businessman now, Aunt Cass. Well, you were born a businessman, Cassius. You had every right. Well, you... that wasn't very fun. Why does business have to be fun? I don't have fun here. This is just what I do. We all have to make our silver somehow. True. And I think I found a way that fits my talent. Well, tell me about it. She's wiping down the, the counter as she's, you know, kind of like absently working while she's listening to you. Well, it's, uh, it's gambling, all right. Well, everything's um, a gamble, Cassius. You should know that better than anyone. I... I do, and frankly, um, it's a little, little, little difficult to explain. I, uh, I think Try we'll me. just leave it at, we're fixing some odds for people. Oh, I see. I see. See, I figured you might be the one doing the gambling, and you might have considered yourself some sort of poker elite or something on us. You're telling me you're running the gambling? Uh, yes, just procuring some allies here and there using some connections as a means to get the business more notoriety. She takes a poll on her coffee and she goes, and whereabouts are you doing this? I haven't heard about it from anyone. Down by the docks, mostly. The docks? You'll hear about it soon enough, hopefully. The docks? Well, you could get in some trouble over there at the docks. Absolutely. That's where I find myself most times. <sighs> she rolls her eyes, <laughs> takes a sigh. Well, Take care of yourself. I don't want to see you hurt again. I'm happy to see you not blood, bloodied or bruised or battered. It's always appreciated. Excellent. Um, all right. Where are we heading next? We are going to go to Vidar. Vidar, um, you are at Madame Raz's tent uh, for one of your, you said weekly visits, right? You visit her quite often. Oh, most certainly. <laughs> weekly <laughs> visits. Multiple times a week. <laughs> yes. So uh, Regular people go to bars. He goes to Madame Raz's <laughs> tent. Excellent. So Madame Raz, all of her glory, um, you know, dressed in her misshapen cloak of different colors of red and orange and uh, purple, um, you know, her hair, you know, a mix of feather and actual hair, beads coming down. Um, she's just finished a tarot for you. Um, you found it quite interesting. Um, nothing too different. Um, and she picks up the cards, um, hands you a another a stone with some etching into it, pre presses it into her, your palm in a way, and she looks you in the eyes, as she always does, and it goes, Vidar, I have a favor to ask you. 
Oh, c certainly, Madam Raz. How can I help you? Well, before, I know it's quite unusual. You know, people people come to me for advice, usually. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to ask you, so I just want to make sure you're okay with this. I enjoy our arrangement. You're a good lad. She pats you on the head. Um, <laughs> she reaches way up. The bed. Oh, yeah. I, I lean down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're a good lad, and I don't want to, you know, ruin our friendship. I really don't see you as a client. Madam Raz, you may not be from Skov, but I think you as uh, a, a true Skov in, in your heart. Oh, thank you. Um, she's very flattered. She's like, so this stone, this is a demon bane charm. Mm. I've been being visited by demons quite often recently, which which happens, happens. Um, she's, she spins around and... He, you know. Yeah, he like leans in a little bit. And he's like, okay, all right. Which happens, happens. And you, you might have figured out by now that I'm, I'm not your average soothsayer. Um, I just want you no. to, to keep an eye out. Um, the blues have been sort of breathing down my back a little bit because of uh the things that have been happening with the demons around here um and i'm quite worried i'll lose my business i have a question for you madam raz of course. um i have another uh, member of my my crew named ben who's a, a titerosi like yourself um oh another one in dusk yes uh, i'm it's my understanding that demon bane charms grow uh, a, a red and hot wind are near him. Is he part of the demons that you're worried about? Oh, I don't know anyone by that name. Um, I'm not quite sure. Usually when a demon comes close and, you know, my runes, which you've seen by now, she has many um, right. underneath her sleeves that are on, like, a chain. Um, let me know when someone's coming in. Um, and I, I just hide. I vanish. It's something that I've learned how to do through study. Um, Can you teach me how to do this? Maybe one day. <laughs> could you teach Could you teach Cobb how to do this? He would owe me one big if he could you, learn. You know. Oh wait, you didn't ever tell her name, did you, Cobb? Yeah, she doesn't know you. Uh, you're muted. You're muted. Just want to double check that, that before I. Absolutely not. That, so yeah. All right. <laughs> but I ben told tried her. To leave, ben tried to leave his name, and he's like, Don't "So do would that. you say Would you say that you've told them about Cobb? Told yes, Adam I told her about? everything. Okay. Okay, yes. Well, I mean, I could give it a try. He's a whisper, right? That's what you call him in the underworld? Uh, yes. Though, uh, yeah. A whisper could work. Okay. Potentially. I'm not exactly sure if it's something that I've, I've always known how to do or if I learned how to do it. You know, she brushes over books as she speaks. <laughs> it's just I'm, I'm actually, uh, if you don't mind me asking, before we get to your favor, I understand that we're, that we're bantering a bit here. But, uh, uh, Ben says he comes from an island that uh, uh, he is nothing like uh, Akaros or Skov. Uh, do you mind telling me just a little bit about where you come from, uh, so I can see if there is 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 really a Tychros? Tychros, yes. Well, there there certainly is, child. There certainly is. Her I hands, knew it. Her hands. <laughs> her ben, hands. Ben, back ben is a dirty liar. <laughs> he tell me that it's not. It's just an island. It is. It is. It's not on any map you've probably ever seen, but it's quite a. It's quite a ways away. It's difficult to move through the the lightning barriers and the strange magical forces that keep people in and out of Taishros. Um, if your friend Ben is claiming to be from there, that's that's quite rare. I should like to meet him. Uh, he wants you a oh. lot, but I maybe demon. So. Oh. Oh, you're saying they might be connected. He says his wife is is eaten by a not not possessed by it. <laughs> so, I mean, there's demon in there somewhere. This is incredibly interesting information. I I was uh, under the impression you were aware. Oh well, it wasn't in your cards today. So. A soothsayer that doesn't know something. Now that's uh, uh, maybe I should be the one doing the fortunes. Hey, I've always claimed to you that I will never lie. I only call what I see. Soothsayers mm. who speak in absolutes <laughs> are frauds. I told that to the, a woman I got a, a reading from the other day, and she was very cross. Oh, you've got a reading from another soothsayer? There's lots of them on this alley, and you're not always here. <laughs> fine, fine, <laughs> fine. Go now, go now. <laughs> no, you, you, your favor. You, you, asked, you wanted well, to ask me something. I wanted you to be on the lookout for a demon. Oh, um, I gave you this sure. charm, and I wanted to see if you might be able to tell me something about it. Sure, I'll keep an eye out. Right. 
thank you, good lad. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> and, oh, and thank you, thank and you, course, Madam Rod. Do come again. Do come again. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> He like a little like a chai, he's got the demon bane charm like clutched to his chest and he just kind of walks out, <laughs> looks around, and sh like settles his shoulders, puts the coat ready, gets out that wailing hook and just walks on home. <laughs> I love it, Madam Corvus. We're going to you now. Okay. Uh, you are at the Gilded Plume. Your business, um, Lila or not Lila? Excuse me. Um, your is it Lyra? Lyra. Yes, okay. I've got a Lila and a Lyra. Lyra. Lyra's not there. Um, and you are just sort of like maintaining the books today. Um, it's still, I mean, there's no proper morning in Duskfall, right? Um, so like it's, but it's the time where people are like, you know, getting up. You're already up. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a business owner. You are uh, doing some things to get done before you have to go down to that dreaded half-built ship, the Fortunate Scale, and see your Rapscallion crew of the Birth Black Hats. <laughs> Um, those, those boys <laughs> and the business practices. And you are greeted by someone who is not your accountant, but sort of a, an accountant for all of the brothels that are on good favor um, in Silkshore um, named Mylev. So Mylev, Mylev. Mylev comes in. Yep, this is a person that you know. Um, and he goes, well, hello, love. And he sits down. He's like, I hate to be the bearer you're, of bad news. And he sits down. My love, my love, no, no sugarcoating it. Just to say what you need to say. Of, of course, madam. I would never do that to you. Um, I I hate to say this, but uh, you're, you're late on payment. I, I've been I, checking I, my I'm... documents and I haven't seen anything from the Gilded Plume in a month. There have been some complications complications whatever do you mean he writes that down in his notebook don't <laughs> don't say don't <laughs> <laughs> he stops mid mid he stops mid-sentence looks up at you off the record well of course this shuts the book i don't have a book to shut but i would <laughs> one of my investments has taken a An interesting turn. I expect that there there will be be a return on it soon, but it evolved from something that would have been more immediately lucrative, and so I find myself in a precarious financial position position as of as of late. You're you're investing. Whatever you're investing in. Something new. Something new. Well, the, the, the Bells won't like this at all. Um, the Bells uh, is a faction that you have heard of, but know almost nothing about. The money runs up to them. <laughs> is all you know. I can't... I, I am not yet able to make my payment. What would you suggest I do in the meantime? Well, do you have any collateral that we can put up in the meantime? He looks at mm. you. <laughs> Shit, do I have any collateral? You have the brothel. <laughs> you have the employees <laughs> of the brothel. <laughs> Furniture. Don't say the warehouse. You don't, yeah, you don't. <laughs> 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 We're just, we become a Ponzi scheme. Just fucking borrow it, taking out loans to as collateral on other loans. Just fucking... <laughs> Someone who is smarter with decisions than me, I don't want to put my establishment up as collateral, but do I really have another option? Well, you can choose the building or the people who work in it. Yeah, so, the employees as well. Yeah, pick the lesser of two evils, in your opinion. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, Mama, are you telling her to sell people? No, I said, and <laughs> as the lesser of two evils. I can put, I can put put the building up as collateral for the moment right love okay well i'll take that down um i don't think they'll they'll come take you know the bells don't hit the streets much um i don't think they'll come do anything but i, w I would get payment as, as quickly as possible that is the idea and the hope 
Okay, well, I'll, I'll take that down and I'll try and buy you some time. All right, you've always been good to me. You've always been prompt on your payments, so I'll, I'll try and buy some time. I know your name's good. Thank, thank you, my love. This is a very unusual situation that I did not anticipate, and I am quite disgruntled with the entire affair. Well, I should hope so. Um, I and mean, he closes the book um, again after he wrote in the thing, and he takes off. Excellent. Well done, well done. Um, Cormac, let's go. <laughs> We're moving along. All right, you are having a card game, but um, it is not with everybody. It is just oh. with Christopher Von Buren, former business okay. entrepreneur, <laughs> yep. now ghost. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> former, former in a very literal sense. <laughs> what an endeavor. Um, it's, a, it's a bit like war. Um, you guys are playing a game like war. Right. Um, and you're winning, of course. <laughs> Christopher, um, notably the worst card player of your group. <laughs> but he has to meet you. Um, and you're meeting yeah. uh, along one of the little canal hideaways that you've played in before. Um, and the talk so far has mostly been pleasantries. Um, you know, just catching up. Um, how much about your gang activity uh, would you like to share? Uh, anything he asks, really. Don't really. Okay. He's not, he, of course, not trying to hide anything, but he's not just gonna tell him random stuff. All right. So he's, you guys are playing, and Corm and, and, and Christopher, excuse me, Christopher looks at you and he's like, "Well, Corm, <clears throat> I uh, I've heard some rumors about uh about your new business, and I thought I'd like to ask you about them a little bit." All right. Uh, well, go ahead. I, what? I'm uh, I'm an open book. Well, except, for the, except for this one. Well, is it true that you're fighting ghosts? Uh, well, no, I'm I'm not fighting the ghosts at all. No. Well, you know, we we ghosts, we talk. Um, and I and I I heard some uh some new fellows who I've met before, uh, ran around crow's foot, saying mm -hmm. that they had to fight for freedom, and that fleshies like you were betting on them. Well. <laughs> That, that's a, it's not a lie, no. That's what we're doing, but, uh... uh yes. I don't really, <laughs> I just don't really know. Like, I don't really... <laughs> it's, I don't know, really, I don't know how, how you want me to respond. Are, are, you, are you angry, or are you more of a... Oh, it, it's not me. Uh, concerned it's not me you have to worry about. It's, it's the reconcile, mate. Yeah, you, you know, um, you mentioned that the first time we talked to her, you... Oh, you you brought them up, but right. Well, we're vetting you for them. We want you to be a part of it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm just running the money. I'm not really doing anything. But <laughs> your hands are all over it. All right. What what happens then? What happens? Well, nothing. What yet. are you thinking? Nothing yet, but you don't want your name attached to that type of thing with the reconcile being already knowing who you are. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess I can't really change my name then. That's sort of going to work. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, I don't, I don't right. know. Well, I don't right know. You should try to get out of it. Thanks for the follow, <laughs> Mrs. Hamina. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> okay, excellent. We'll, we'll cut it right there. And finally, right. we come to Ben Woods. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I don't, you... I don't like how I was saved last, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. We, we saved the best for last. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I'm so, really mediocre. I could have gone uh, first. All other players, I've got... I think I've got one from Vidar, I've got one from Cobb, and I've got one from Cassia. So uh, just Jacqueline and Hammy, if you guys could roll me a survey. Um controlled uh limp or standard for your PE. &E. Um right. and just roll them real quick. Um and we'll see what those are. But I can I can still continue the scene as is. So Ben, you woke up and you heard what you heard um through our yep. PM conversation. Um yep. <laughs> which is still on the low at this point. Uh the back of your head has a lump on it. And yeah. the the you know the the lamp light over you 
is blinding is the first thing that happens. So you, you pick your head up, you notice that you're on boards, on wood, um, and you hear the sloshing of water, you smell the sea salt, um, you're definitely somewhere near the water, um, and you struggle to get up. Um, you know, obviously you weren't exactly sure where you've been for the past couple of hours. Somehow you've made it. As you gather your surroundings, it's pretty quick to decide that you're at the docks. Um, mm-hmm. You can actually see the fortunate scale off in the distance, about 200 yards away um, in its normal sitting location. Um, and bef- as you struggle to stand up, a, a young boy uh, runs up to you. Um, okay. And he goes, are you, are you Benjamin Woods by chance? Oh my fucking. Um, yeah, that's me. What's up? I have a letter. I have a letter for you. I'm, I'm, I'm Cypher. I'm a Cypher. Um, I have a letter for you. Do, do I know what a Cypher is? A Cypher is a well-known thing. It is a okay. faction, um, of super, like, super professional couriers. Okay. Um, and they are known for their, uh, discretion. Um, people pay them because they will never give up information as they send letters across if another faction pinches your cipher um they're known to hold up under torture and things like that and just be com- incredibly secretive this is a young okay. kid though okay yeah um uh, all right i'm gonna just take the letter and kind of like back of the head like just feeling the lumpsy where it like like the tender <laughs> spots are like um and then i'll open and read the letter excellent so you the letter is on a piece of parchment paper it is sealed um there is no mark on the seal it's just wax um, mm-hmm. So you break the wax without tearing the paper, open it. Is up. it just like a regular, like little, like circle stamp, or does yep. it actually have like any intricate? Nope, just uh, wax stamped right. on there. Yep, no symbol right. at yep. all. Um, turn probably open. what the ciphers do. <laughs> and yeah. you you crack it open, um, and it's written in a very fancy script. Um, it is, sorry, one second. Oh. It is written in a very fancy script, and it says, "Your wife, as you describe her, is still here in this city." Please find her and remove her forthwith. Um, and underneath is an icon of a bee, um, which is, you know, not a common thing. There aren't a lot of bees. <laughs> There's a lot of rain in Duskfall. Um, but you know what it is. You know, you've seen them before, especially in, in Taishiros, perhaps. So a bee is marked on the bottom of it. Um, and the courier takes a bow and sprints off. You didn't even tip him, man. <laughs> it's already been paid for. <laughs> you know i'd love to fucking find and take care of this but i don't know where the fuck she's at <laughs> i'm just gonna scream this to the kid as he's running away he uh he doesn't say yeah, he doesn't know he doesn't say anything um he's just a, a kind courier all right he's basically waking up with a hangover <laughs> so yep you pick yourself off the boards and presumably run <sighs> towards now the people who've got a four or higher on their survey. Um, is that Vidar um, and Cormac? Anyone else? Nope. Not me. All right. So Vidar and Cormac. Um, you guys have all gathered back to the scale now. Uh, this is the proper session start, I shall say. Um, you guys have all gathered back at the scale. Uh, the two of you, who I just named, um, heard a, like almost like a screaming in the last night. Um, the words that you were able to make out were Lila, Demon, and Red Feather. These were what you were able to make out. Um, and the voice was familiar to you. Um, so, uh, you are now on the scale. Um, ben is approaching the scale. I'd like to turn the tables over to you guys um, for any conversation. We'll say for you're all there, Elizabeth, you've made your way down there as well. Um, so have you, Cassius, you've come back. Or actually, you spent a couple gotcha. nights here, haven't you? Um, so yeah, you're yeah. here already. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So you're all there. Real quick, um, <clears throat> when Vidar and Ben had their conversation last session, did he name his wife? No. Okay. No, yeah, I don't think so. Nope. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys can walk out, uh, or we can just start off with uh, Ben walking in, if that makes more sense. If you would go in, Ben, I don't know. I don't want to make you do anything. No, Ben. Ben would go in, probably looking for like a pail of water to splash his face sure. with. Or something. Ben walks in, looking incredibly tired, incredibly dazed, um, and uh, you guys have not seen him for two days. 
you go uh, on a vacation? So what's about how you show up? Uh, no, not a vacation. Just I uh, thought you had skipped a, town. Apparently a nap that was didn't didn't help for fuck all. But you didn't nap for two days. Maybe Titerosi sleep that long. I, I don't know. I've I've yeah, napped yeah. for two days sometimes. <laughs> it's also like the concept about a day is a uh, little muddled. A is, is there like actually like a sure. clock? Is there like clocks? Yes. In? <laughs> yeah. Some of the hours have names. Uh, don't oh. ask me what. They are. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I need to know what are. <laughs> hours one or hour two? two maybe. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're sticking with our traditional twelve hours. Just clock. turn into the count from Sesame Street. <laughs> one. Uh, uh. No. Does Does Ben look physically injured? Yes. <laughs> Did you get in a fight with the cat or something? <laughs> no, a bunch of a fucking gray coats. <laughs> Gray coats. Gray coats. Are they like worse blue coats? I don't fucking know. All I know is I was walking away and then I got hit in the back of the head and I got knocked out. Where? Seems where? For where, them. where are you walking away from? Does gray I, coats sound like anything? Is it like a faction that I'm aware of? Uh, gray, Any of us? Would, I, would I be aware of it? Um. You guys can roll consort checks if you want to see if you know anything about it. <laughs> I think I have zero in consort. So, Let's so by the way, it. out of curiosity, there obviously we can try and argue for rolls the different way. But if you ask us to make a roll and we don't have a uh, point in it, would we still need to make it stress regardless? No, you can roll <laughs> it with zero die, and it basically rolls with disadvantage. Um, ah, okay. So, like, you roll two dice, and then, like, you hit the lower result. And that's automatically okay. coded in. You just click the skill and roll it. Back to okay. back, one on I have board. zero in consort, <laughs> so I'm going to pass on that one. Sure. <laughs> We're rolling rocks today. Get all the bad ones out of the way right now. <laughs> Anyone else want to roll yeah, it? Right. Anyone else want to roll it, or should we just go with that? Uh... I'll, I'll try. I'll try. Consort, you said? Yep. That would Control be more skill. five. <laughs> I, I never know what to put in terms of risky controlled. Uh, just the standard is risky. Uh, or sorry, risky standard is the is the what well, you can do controlled. Looks like people are doing controlled standard. So yeah, because I don't think I mean based on like what Damn. we're asking, we're not like incurring a risk. All right, so the three there, um, <clears throat> Cassius, you haven't heard of him. Straight up means nothing to you. People who wearing gray cloaks, right? Uh, Cormac, um, you've heard whispers of these guys. Um, they seem to be some sort of faction that uh, doesn't have, like, a, a lair, per se, or, like, a turf, per se. They sort of seem to, like, work. Um, it's a group of people that, you know, sort of seem to work independent. You know, don't don't know too much else about them. Um, Madam Corvus, you know that the uh, Grey Cloaks are former Bluecoats that um, have sort of turned to crime and, and just sort of beat up on any faction they can. Uh, it's a nasty bunch of sons of bitches, <laughs> and you're and you're welcome to share that with the crew if you'd like. The gray coats are former blue coats who have gone rogue, were were excommunicated, fired, what have you, left on their of their own volition. They are not the fun type of person. They. They tend to strong arm any gang, gang or individuals they come into contact with and operate. That explains with the fucking pleasantries. I thought the blue coats were bad of fuck enough and they were legal. <laughs> that, I would say that was what I thought too. But these are not pleasant people. What'd you do to piss them off, then? They're criminal. They wouldn't nope. go after you just for breaking the law, right? Uh, apparently I was out past curfew, and to them, that's enough to hassle me for it. Mm. What, what blue what coats curfew? Want to uh, no, wait, we, have, we have a curfew. Cassius is correct. Yeah. Um, so, for anyone that may have missed the newspaper clippings, uh, in Crow's Foot, there is a curfew being enforced because of the street war, but the blue coats are losing footing. Um, the war is sort of bubbling up to a point where the the police force in the district can't keep control of it. Um, and so even though the curfew is there, some people don't follow it. Um, what was you doing in Crow's Foot anyways? Well, 
like Vidar said, got to get my own hands where I can get them. So I was out putting on any legwork I could. Yeah, uh, but apparently, what... it went, apparently went a little later than I expected it to. Well, What's good all on the work, then? though? I mean, we, we're added to the crow's foot as a gang soon. Yes, and we, we have uh, someone well, with experience now. Yeah, you can show it for I'm sorry, could so you repeat, could you repeat what you asked? Because I couldn't, I didn't hear because my ear popped. <laughs> what kind of legwork was you doing out in the crow's foot? We're, we're added there as a group soon, and that's got to be safer, right? I mean... I... Listen, if you all wanted to come with me while I asked for the description of almost every single person I fucking met about what my wife looks like, and if they've seen her, you're more than welcome to come. But I figured, you know, y'all had better things to do. Oh, you can show us not who to get walloped by. Or who I'll, we need to be walloping. What? I'll People in the gray coat. <laughs> if, if I see these fucking gray coats, I'll chop their goddamn limbs off. Oh! I don't know if we want to get on the bad side of them, though, right? Like, we're... We can't. We, we can't let the gray coats push us around, though. At the same time, you don't want right, to inspire we can. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. We can. We can let them push uh, us around all they fucking want with a thank uh, you. How do you do, sir? As long as it keeps us all alive and on the right side of one of the more powerful I don't, gangs. Well, I don't share the demeanor with which Mister Cobb is saying saying it. I would would argue would agree and argue that we do not want to inspire reprisals at our current power level. Right, we don't kill them, but, you know, they could lose a few teeth. True. And that, then that come seems back worse and pull than out than killing them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cobb, I don't think you've experienced death enough to say what's worse than it. <laughs> <laughs> Cobb Cobb, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll let you do the exact same thing I did. How do you do, sir? No, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Bye. And then you'll get conked on the head, and I'll just watch. Right. Well. Well. Um, right. You say, "How do you do, you. sir? I'll fucking kill you if you try." Ain't to nobody me. better than at. You know, Vidar. I'm starting to like do, the way sir, you talk indeed. more and more as the days go. <laughs> well, it seems that the gray coats have some degree of middle ground with the grinders. I mean, in some way that they are outcasts of their own. Industry. I mean, calling the blue coats an industry is a bit too respectful. I agree. No, but... no, they were an industry. They, <laughs> they, they certainly make plenty of money, money strong arming out in out of the the citizens of the city. I would not think that the blue coats and the grinders would be allies, though. Uh, they're too too headstrong. But what's stronger than a common interest? A uh, common hate. And we struck that chord with the grinders. Let's say we can't find it with the gray coats. What common hate did we strike with the grinders? The blue we coats. played off their their want to be with the good and with the dockers. Hmm. I mean, yeah, that's part of it. But they definitely don't like the blue coats, and we give them a step ahead of them. Sure. What did you? So I. We're added into crows for soon, right? We need some supply for the next fight. Yes. Right. I heard from my uh my mate in the gondoliers. He well, he could have been exaggerating, but uh, he said that the bodies are piling up in the canals over in Crowsfoot. Uh, and I assume that means the gray coats are making some of them. I would I imagine mean, I'll, so. I'll, I'll tell you what: if they wanted to, they could have easily made a body out of me. So. Well, that would be their mistake, then. Oh, you bet your goddamn ass. <laughs> ah, he our claps Ben on the back and says, you're growing hair on your chest. Feathers. Ah! Well, <laughs> Cobb on the back. I don't got any of those. Cobb, do these gondoliers have any certain nice. insignia or garment that signifies them? Uh, yeah, they, well, they look like I boatmen. The boats are a giveaway. Yeah, do it. I don't know if they have, like, an emblem stat set earlier that, like, a, a cane sword is a pretty common part of the regalia, especially for their rooks, probably. Um, how beyond out of that, the, I don't know. How out of the question would it be to acquire a gondolier vessel? 
I don't think that I have that sort of pull with him. Do you, or have you tried? <laughs> I, uh... I'm, um... I'm having him help me with uh, with a little magical something to keep us all safer out on jobs. And uh, they don't seem especially happy to be doing it. I think I'm already on sort of thin ground. Um, I think the next time I need something from them, I'm going to have to pay for it. Especially something like a boat. So we might be able to do something like that, but my name ain't going to mean nothing to them. We'll have but to deal if... with them. We'll have to deal with them one to one like everyone else. What if we come to them in the name of charity, though? You got something to give away? Because I don't. No. Well, we was talking <laughs> about doing. We was talking about doing their work round for docs. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't. There were some questions about whether they'd approve of the, uh, our methods and that sort of thing, especially seeing as we're letting half of the ghosts we capture go, and they're more of a hundred percent removal. Uh, <laughs> service but uh i mean if if that's something you wanted to pursue then maybe we could work something out along those lines i mean you're the you're the talker you're the businessman you'd have to be the one convincing them but yeah, but uh, Thro throat's a little scratchy from the past couple of days so we'll see I... what i can do but nonetheless what i'm proposing is maybe offering to pick up some of the slack for the gondoliers in crow's foot crow's foot they have a problem and they can't keep up with the supply. Maybe we can step in and, you know, defer some of the flow of bodies. To Wait, the if, if I could, if I could, if I could, <laughs> along a similar line, but maybe a little less dangerous, we offer to pick up some slack for the gondoliers in the docks where it's safe. And they can take on the burden of. Oh, the, they can take on the burden of plugging around Crow's Foot, picking bodies out of the canals. We both get bodies, and we ain't gotta go to Crow's Foot. We just work for docks. Have you oh, seen any carry you to were... pick from in the docks? <laughs> oh, Cub. people croak every now and then. Cub, I that's, did not that's know not that, our that, business, you were, that you were from Titros. I see chicken feathers coming out of your hair. <laughs> 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 Calm. We the docks will not give us good fighters like we need. We need to impress Cersei, and Crow's Foot has fighters. Why don't it, we are trying to make a deal with the gondolier so we don't walk in and get our shit rocked by the first gang of rooks to come our way, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we attach onto a gondolier patrol? And we say, we'll protect you. You don't have to put your men at risk. And then we get a few bodies along the way that uh, that you, they, could, they can go amiss. Posing as some bravos might not be a bad idea. Sure, doing, doing work for the gondoliers. Then they don't put their people at risk. They don't have to pay us with, with money. They just need to let a few corpses slip away from the boat. And mm. all's well that ends well. And that. maybe if we want to keep the grig going, we just send some of Cersei's rooks. Certainly, they don't. They do, they work for us. The the gondoliers get free men, but we get free corpses. Oh. Well, and we just and we just make sure that the spirits don't cross too many paths with the gondoliers that we release. So, so you want to go as gondoliers because the grey coats respect them. That sort well, of cause thing. Because the, the gondoliers. Are a bigger gang than us. Right, right. Their right, name right, carries right, more right. weight than us. Yeah. So if someone's yeah, yeah. going to ambush us, they are ambushing the gondoliers. Just like how we work with the grinders, they're protecting us. Yeah. So I, I think something like that could work. I, I do. And then um, we get to fight on a boat, and I've never done that. <laughs> that I, I think I get to I, finally I, use my whaling hook. I think something like that could work, but there is one, one little thing. And that is, the gondoliers won't like what we're doing. They keep the ghosts out of the cities. They don't just care about the bodies. They do what the, spirits, the, the spirit wardens do. They clean up for the little people, keep the ghosties out of your backyard and that sort of thing. And they know? won't like one bit that we're letting them back out into the city. Don't tell them that we are. 
Yeah. Sure, but I mean, if we make it a regular thing, you know, we send a couple of rooks their way once a week and pick a couple bodies off their cart, sooner or later they're going to start asking what we're using them for. And we tell them a lie. Cassius is great at telling lies. And that Sometimes. might work for a while, but I mean, you know, if this deal holds for long but enough, we'll have a hundred bodies, two hundred bodies. It, remember, remember, the grinders are the one running this, not mm -hmm. us. Out of character really quick, Cobb, Kyle, did you say that Cobb told us about what he did with the gondoliers earlier, or no? Uh, I mentioned offhandedly this session that Cobb has been working with the gondoliers, too. Okay, did you mention anything about, like, actually the ritual, about, like, procuring that or learning about that? Sure, I can say, I can give you guys a, a couple okay. more details. Uh, so, right... Uh, this this thing I've been working with the gondoliers. Uh, my my mate Edric, he got me a little uh, a little tome that they've got over there. Actually, I don't have it on me. They just let me look at it for a while. Um, and they got this ritual. Apparently, it's been being passed through the gondoliers since before the. It's not called the calamity, and this is it. That's a uh, that's the Ma Ma Matthew Mercer thing. Cataclysm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they've been they've been passing it through the gondoliers since before the cataclysm, um, this little ritual sort of thing, and it. Uh, well, I don't rightly know exactly how it works, but you you uh, you you take a, an amulet or something like a sort of like a spirit bane charm or sort of thing, and you uh, you you put a little piece of, of soul in it, or fake soul, that sort of thing. And then when something negative is about to happen to you, it goes into the soul fragment instead and blows the whole thing up and you get to keep yourself in one piece. Well, there I think that's our in. That's Cobb, you sowed the seeds of deception and you didn't even mean to do it. What does that mean, mate? What I'm getting at is that... The gondoliers already think we're honestly trying to get rid of them. Sure. Sure. Sure, that's going to get loud down the road, but we're taking one problem sure. at a time. Sure, I mean, you're right. You're right that, that we we look like the grinders right now. Um, oh, fuck. I did tell Edric. I did tell Edric that I was with the Scale Venture. If they hear that the both black hats are the same as the Scalers, they'll be able to put two and two together right quick. Once again. God damn it, Cobb! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, I mean, look. I he's he's my mate from way back. He's from the Silk Song, maybe. You know, maybe that'll mean something. And I said it in the interest of getting this home, which is going to keep us safe in 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 uh, Crow's Foot sooner or later. Right. Actually, I don't, I don't don't have a ritual quiet, quite so. down yet. Out yeah, of curiosity, is... how much is he your friend? <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect him to take a bullet for me, but I would not not sure I met anyone like that. Well, I mean, would, you, would you be willing scale? to put a bullet in him? Uh, <laughs> Basically, what we're saying, Cobb, you may have been a little loose with your lips already, and now Vidar may have to pull his tongue out. Well, right, nothing oh. in this world comes free, mate. As you I know, so you, you're intimately used to pay in, understand. You're <laughs> used to paying in scale, because that's what you've got. And if you accidentally spend too much scale, what you do, you throw up your hands and say, oops, because you got more. But I ain't got that, and I ain't got muscle, and I ain't I got more either, either, Mr. Cobb. This is kind of... A big deal for right, you. Right, but yeah, madam, um, um, my apologies, madam, I didn't mean to sound like I was coming for you. Um, but all I'm <laughs> I saying... Like, I like how Cobb immediately, like, backs down when someone is from his <laughs> I mean, she... area with influence, like, yes. is <laughs> yes. a little bit mad at him. The madam was probably a boogeyman from his childhood, right? <laughs> like, don't make too much pro trouble in the Silk Song or the madam will come fucking pick you up off the street. I'm only, like, 30... You know? 
dude. You know, <laughs> uh, okay. you know I've heard a couple but stories. But the story about, is so okay. much older. I've heard um, a couple stories about Tysharosis, too, that but, they, people tell their children. <clears throat> the, the point I'm getting at is that I needed something from the gondoliers, and that means they needed something from me in return. And I didn't have coin to give them, and I didn't have muscle to convince them otherwise. So I had to give them goodwill and information, because that's all a, a person like me can deal in. So well, I don't I I think we're coming to a bit of a of a heated argument here. We don't we're not angry at you, Cobb. We can work this out. But in the future, our plan is to stay underneath the giants so that they take the hits instead of us. So oh, you if you got what? if you've got to pay with information, pay with you, the right information. You know what? I did tell him that we were working for the grinders, though. See, the, it's salvageable. No worries. <laughs> Sure. Very well. I we apologize might... for losing my temper, Mr. Cobb. We might be able to work it. I think that sooner or later we'll probably have to cut Edric in or do something to make sure that he or don't... Or cut Edric. I'd prefer... I mean, he's the only one that checks in on me, ma'am, for me. I'd prefer we didn't... Uh... We could send one of Cersei's Rook Crown. I don't think the scarves at the Marigold would like that very much. I could talk to them. <laughs> I think you would like the scarves at the Marigold. Maybe I check on. <laughs> maybe I'll check in on your mum. Uh, no. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, you guys hear a voice from outside of the scale. Hey, you the both black hats in there? Do we have an eye slide on our door? I really want to have an eye slide on the door. <laughs> All yes. Right. Well, why not? Okay. <laughs> this is extremely important. Do, do we, uh, does the does the bow of the the broken ship hang over where our entrance is? I think it's half a ship. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, not, it's, entirely, it's not entirely right, well, built. Well, I, I'm going to go out there. I really, I'm, I'm, I need to stretch my legs too. <laughs> Poor Mac, okay. Well, yes, I think we should all address this. I slide. <sighs> okay, you look out. Yeah. You see three looking gangers. Um, if you uh, if you roll a study, I can tell you a little bit more about them. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Two ones. Let's Cormac. go. Aren't we, aren't, yeah, Cormac stands was, up. Yeah, aren't we, uh, aren't we expecting hunting. three gangers from uh, the, the grinders? Oh, the rooks. Yeah, the grinders' rooks. I will verify that. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. They're, they're, they're grinders. <laughs> okay, good. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, gentlemen, I'll show you to your room. <laughs> so the three <laughs> grinders show up. They all have the um, the pallor from the uh, the refinery, uh, working in the refinery. Mm -hmm. So like the bloodshot veins um, coming through their eyes and things like that. Right. Pale skin. They certainly, they certainly aren't passing off as gondoliers. Um, Did I drink with any of them over the week? Uh, no, nope, these are new ones. Okay. Um, so they, uh, they walk up They're you know, they're wearing armor. They have clubs, swords, uh, a couple flintlock pistols. Um, you know, they're decked out, um, in battlement already. Um, you said you were showing them into the scale, Cormac? I mean, well, why not? You don't necessarily have a bed for them. Um, um, I, well, they're going to, sh they're going to, sh we have to show them what they're going to be protecting and such for now. <laughs> sure. So it's, it's sure. two, it's two men and a woman. Um, they introduce themselves uh, as Hugo, Dewar, and Louise. Um, Hugo and Dewar being uh, what you guys would probably think are brothers, and then Louise being um, sort of like almost in charge of them a little bit, sort of bossing around. She's pretty tall. She's like 6'3", um, black hair and a blonde pony. Um, and the other two have shaved heads and uh, are just look pretty brawny, pretty muscular builds. Um, and yeah, they look like dockers that are now militant. <laughs> All right. Welcome. And they look around. Don't say anything. Is coffee uh is coffee a thing, by the way? Some sort of <laughs> dredge. There's a caffeinated <laughs> caffeinated mushroom. Yeah. Eel juice. <laughs> yeah, some sort of coffee, yeah. <laughs> Well, welcome. What do you think of the place? Uh looks like a half built ship, says Hugo. <laughs> Very perceptive. Those skills are coming handy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, okay. this is merely our uh, conference room at the moment, uh, where we like to discuss things. Uh, nonetheless, there's some open quarters here, here and there. If time comes, you need to draw back on a little bit of heat, you know, 
don't be afraid to ask. Try and find a place to lay low for a while. Nonetheless, most of your business will probably take place in the front of the warehouse in the docks. Have you been over there yet? Of course, uh, says Dewar. <laughs> right, well, it's under some refurbishment right now, and uh, Mr. Uh, how do you say your last name, Hammy? I always forget. Is it? Uh, O'Dirty. O'Dirty, yeah. Mr. O'Dirty is taking that um, in full fledged. Nonetheless, uh, we have a little bit of a venture we're trying to work out and right now, and I think we'll let you know when we need our when we need uh, our muscle. But where can we reach you at? Uh, Louise cocks her head back and she's like, "We stay nearby. Um, there's not really a method or anything like that." The uh, and she like lists off an inn that's not too far away. Okay. She's like, "I guess where we're at." Um, if you need us, come find us and talk to the bartender there. She'll okay. know where to I was us. hoping for like a horn or something. <laughs> <laughs> summon, summon, summon rooks. the rooks. <laughs> <laughs> they come out of the tree. They come out of the like the rooftops. <laughs> they're coming. But not that good. All right. <laughs> they're tough. Not looking, yet. Though. They're tough right. looking though for sure. Um. Well. It's, uh... It's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, but do you just come here on introduction, or do you have other business? Uh, well, Cersei told us to show up. We showed up. That's <laughs> you got an order for us. We're happy to follow. If not, we're more than happy to spend the day drinking. Right. Um. Well, go ahead. You can start at that. Don't get too drunk. Um. <laughs> I have an operation in order today. Actually, uh, I uh, I got something for you. I got something for you. What's up? Um. Not really sure how uh, how how appropriate this is for your skill set and all that, but uh, if you could just pass pass the word along that anyone in the docks who has got a spirit or ghost problem should take that to Cersei, and she can talk to us, and we'll come take care of it. Right, got it. Says Dewar. May I add on a quick second rule? They gesture, yep. <laughs> no bad mouth in Cersei. At all. We None would, of it. We would never. Don't even think about it. <laughs> uh, one, I want to get line. really close to one of them say, even if one of them's got your family by the fucking throat, nothing. Right? Nothing. You're looking at a family, says Louise. <laughs> nice. nice. Good. Well, might be at more risk than I am thought was <laughs> but uh, it's very important as we are trying to keep her namesake alive because well Cersei's how, do you alive how, well. how do you three feel about hutton he's in charge says louise <laughs> right. that's all i need to ask about <laughs> that's all i need to ask <laughs> right well go ahead they find, buzz. find yourself some they buzz off um, laughing as they, they leave and just sort of talking, chit-chat. Um, as they go, uh, another person shows up, <laughs> and he knocks on the wood on the, side of the, <laughs> on the side of the ship. And he goes, hello, hello. Study round two. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. I so many visitors <laughs> for. I'm doing an ocular pat down. <laughs> 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 He's good. He's good. Wait, is he yeah, good? Uh, he's 20, good. All right. Twenty he's seconds good. of awkward same, silence. Same fucking. Um, he's, <laughs> you can kind of see him. The eye hole doesn't like really give you a full view, but like, there's no weapons on this guy. He looks like a businessman. Um, or is he a business man? Man, man. Yeah, Akarosi right. gentleman. Um, dirty blonde hair cut into sort of like a bowl cut type deal. Um, okay. Knocking. Hello, hello. Is anyone in? I just I'm watched gonna, three people leave. I certainly hope it's not you. I'm gonna do like f undo four padlocks on the door and then just <laughs> open it. Can we help you? Yes, yes. Well, I was I was supposed to report here. Uh, Chief Helker told me to come down. Um, you guys, uh, the ghost gamblers, right? Uh, gamblers will do. Um, but yes, what? What business you have here? Uh, Helka told me I was to inspect a book. I'm uh, sorry, I'm so rude. My name is Mr. Salisbury. I work at Saltfords. Um, I'm here to check the books to see uh, what Shake the profits have been so far. Uh, wonderful. Um, 
If you give me a quick moment, um, we actually just had a bit of a, you know, a party for some new clients last night. It's a little messy. Let me go clean up for a second. <laughs> Cormac, where's the books? Cormac, <laughs> 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 you got the third book right now. You made that book right. The numbers are right, 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 Cormac, right, right. Well, the numbers well, are always right. In the book. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait his response. So. He just waits for. You to oh, okay, all right. I'm gonna go back in and close the door, throwing one of the locks. <laughs> go back. The books. Um. What? Hello. The books. Hello. <laughs> the hooks. Uh. So. So. What do you mean? Like. What are we doing with the books? I didn't really. A, a businessman from Helker is here. He is just all probably right. coming to inspect our penmanship. You know, just gotta give him what he wants. You. You've got the books, right? I. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know what? I always have the book. That's sure. Don't give him the real book, but the, oh, the, sorry. the book, you know. I'll get the other book. I get feel like second. there is some uh, security risk with you always having our, our books on you. Oh, no, so the oh, thing... Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, like, like, if I was in not with you, I could rob you and then know everything. Uh, no, so the, how this game works is my inventory is exactly how it needed to be. Uh, it has a certain load to count. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like to think that I like to think that Cormac has his own like Archimedes shorthand that is just so like dense and weird that he's the you only have to one. Decipher it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, uh, no. So, so here's the book. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll go out and talk to him if you want. Sp- hello, um, hello. If if if, if, if I'm just saying, Norm, uh, like, <laughs> asks anything, you are a bookkeeper. You're not you're not a, not a street legend gambler. I love your title. I do, but <laughs> you are a bookkeeper. You're an accountant. You're honorable. All right. Uh, all right. It's all right. I, I've talked to people before. It's all right. I'm just gonna unlock the door. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're bankers. They're not people. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, open the, I'm gonna uh, open the door. Sorry about that. Oh, good, good afternoon. Luck. Afternoon, afternoon, sir. Uh, Mr. Salisbury, I've already met your your friend here. Uh, the books, uh, Chief Helker sent me to to all yeah, of them. Yeah, all right. Oh, come out of the table. I'll show you the books. Okay. What Didn't ex- Helker not what? part of our th- organization? What are you showing him? <laughs> Let me get this clear. Uh, yeah. So this is this is just gonna be like I think I'll probably show him the expenses. So like the stuff we you know, we did to the warehouse, mm-hmm. um, stuff we spent on security, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, our expenses book. Okay, so he looks through not it. Our, not the gambling book. He looks through it. As, uh, yes, yes, a good a good preliminary expense report. Um, what about the profits? What what did you make from the first uh, fight? You have a book for that, I assume? Uh, no, so th- that uh, I kept the book after that one, so it's not really on the record just yet. I'm still working on it as we're, we're uh, coming up to the next great Ch- night. Chief Helker told me that you all were really good at keeping books. He was, he was yeah. quite, quite impressed. Oh yeah, no. So, so how how does how the how my books are gonna work? He's gonna pull out the the look at the tables. Uh, so these this this section here is where you're gonna see the profits of the first one. After we after we uh run the expenses for the second fright night, when we run the second fright night, you're gonna see the this this column over here. This is gonna pop up with your your, your profits for the first one. So can I? Uh. <laughs> Can I? Okay, can, this is gonna sound weird. Can I make a sway check to kind of make him feel small, to make him feel like oh, dirty knows what he's talking about? <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, you just be like, oh, you don't yeah. understand yeah, you really this. Don't, yeah, you're really not following. All you're that? a banker, right? I'm gonna need <laughs> yeah. a sway check from Cormac first. Oh, okay. let's go. Uh, All right. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> you the <laughs> and then you can make that move. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So you want set up you want sway. risky and then <laughs> uh risky limited. <laughs> risky limited sounds good to me. Rip. Five. Okay. Next. Okay. Yep. Nice. Well, that's, it's quite unusual, I suppose, but I guess everyone keeps books differently. We don't have a standard accounting system for some god's forsaken reason um <laughs> much to my chagrin everyone wants to Thank excel in this world oh god. <laughs> uh well I, i'm gonna need to see the profits nonetheless oh yeah i just i, I don't know them do you still want to make that check uh cassius e- hmm. now now we're dealing in successes um 
I'm going to lean over to Vidar while all of this is happening. I assume the two of us are just sort of, you know, window dressing. Yeah, I'm, and I'm looking pretty. This all, this all seems a bit complicated, don't you think? Why why can't they just tell them what we made? I mean, there's some there's something to be said for, for, for not showing your hand and all that, but we we didn't make all that much. Surely yeah, there's no I, risk I, I kind of... Yeah, Telling him uh, made some pocket change. I yeah. think we should. I think we should get the profits book. Okay. All right. Uh, so you know it's how, what I can do here. So I'm. I'll, I'll run the numbers as best as I can, and you're gonna get probably uh, the most accurate uh, ass- assumption of of money. Uh, old scale. So mm-hmm. you're gonna get the most accurate assumption of scale. Uh, just let me ru- let me run the numbers real quick and. Uh, with, with this uh, another calculation, just give me a minute. Give me a minute. I'm happy. I'm happy to wait. He leans back, uh, Cormac, and starts go, staring yeah. at all of you. Yeah, Cormac. Uh, so if, does he turn around then? No. I want to. I want to. Okay, I want to pour him a, a, a tankard of like full of mushroom shine and just be like, "Would you like a drink?" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 barely market hour. I want to. I want to try command. <laughs> <laughs> you will drink. <laughs> I want to like take a sip uh, and go. Your turn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ben, Ben's just it. glaring daggers in the go back of the man's head from the rafters. Risky uh, limited or risky standard? Standard. Okay. Oh. Ah. Uh, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm, I'm quite all right. <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. He's more afraid of you though that it's not so much for like you didn't convince him. He's just kind of like, oh, sure, I just sure. Don't interact with this man. <laughs> this big he's, scary he's stuff. A of, <laughs> yeah. he, he, he's he's a bit abrasive about seeking revelment. Just he wants to have a good time. Just he's, he's he comes off a little strong. Sure, sure. Well, I've dealt with all types. Um, so Cormac's gonna go to a, a different section in the book. It's it's the exact same numbers, but it actually has <laughs> the profits filled out in that column. <laughs> uh, gonna flip over. You know, right, uh, you know, make some scratching noises with the, his uh, pen. <laughs> Just doodling. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, can so I? Here... Oh, sure, sure, sure. Right, sorry. So, so, so here's the, uh, here's the like oh, probably a good nine, ninety-five percent estimate here. So go ahead and take a look at this this one here. Here's the profits of uh, what we made, and based on the expenses of what we've uh, done to the warehouse, uh, paying odds and ends, uh, people, that sort of thing. Mr. Salisbury takes your uh, profit report. He puts down mm-hmm. a book of his own. And he starts nice. copying line for line. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, looks at it, you know, furrows a couple times. Says, "All right, well, I, I'd say that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll be back in a week, uh, to evaluate the books again, uh, per yep. the agreement I have with Chief Helker." Um, yep. He shuts his book. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate your business. Of course. No uh, have a great day. day. And he uh, rushes out of the fortunate scale. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. All right. Ooh, right. Right. So we're not letting Helka see for real books anymore, right? Because he's getting two from everything we get. Well, I suppose if he's getting t- no, he's getting half. half. That's of a deal. Half. Yeah. For a blind getting... eye in the warehouse. Yeah. So we're we're not we're not letting him see the real thing, right? We're still paying. Uh, I mean. Right, we'll be I think that is a time. little bit of a slippery slope because we do have a lot of dockers in attendance at our events, and there is no way he, he doesn't find out that those <laughs> that, are big events. You know? That is true. That is true. Also, we, if he really oh, wanted yeah. to, uh, he he also, we, are, we are honest so far. We are we are honest so far. So far, it has been it's honest. <laughs> it's there's not, no there's no reason for him not to trust us. So. Well, no, there's every reason for him not well, to trust. Well, right. he just don't, he doesn't trust anyone. But, right, well, but yeah. we have, but we are not books, doing though. anything untrustworthy. Right, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, well... Oh, so, speaking of untrustworthy... Yeah. Uh, so, there, do you remember when I told you, I guess, about the the uh, the gang, the Reconciled? Did I tell you about them? No, you no. told us about I the Dimmer Sisters. Doesn't I don't ring a bell. Really think so, yeah. All right. Well, uh, there's a gang. I thought I told about. I thought I told you about it. But uh, there's a gang called the Reconciled. They're actually a ghost gang. Um, they're like uh, like a spirit at wardens, but only for ghosts. Like like they are ghosts. There's like a. They're ghosts. What take care of other ghosts? 
Yeah. Oh, that's the ghost. Uh, Is there like a ghost union or something we have to worry oh, about? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's about what it's it gonna boil down to. So, yeah, that's, uh. They're like a ghost union. What about them? Um... Well, uh, I think they know about our operation here. How did is... they find out about it? <laughs> We're. Well, people talk. A lot of people talk. So, you know, like, ghosts are. Well, you know, you you talk to people a lot. I talk to ghosts a lot. Uh, so running around talking to people is, is what you do. I, I talk to spirits. So uh, wondering and finding out, you're going to hear talk from people uh, and ghosts alike. So you're going to hear about ghosts fighting for freedom, which they already had. We're just kind of... But they well, wouldn't no, have they for were, long, they were right? The wardens, right? The wardens would come for them eventually. Right. We're offering a second chance that they that they can take if they can earn it, like like true, like true strongmen. Women. Well, I I have a. No, uh, they're, they're running for the wardens either way. They're, they just have to fight for. Wardens. I have a. a well, sure. We're running actually. from the blue coats. That's just life. You run for uh, the people stronger. Than... Meta question. Have a a meta question. Um. We're setting the ghosts free, unbound to bodies, right? Yes, they're just spirits. Yeah. So presumably, when somebody dies, is when somebody dies, are they like anchored to the body for, for a little bit? Yep, for a few days. Um, okay. And they're like in an okay. infant state where they're really susceptible to either be, you know, procured by a gondolier or a spirit warden, okay. um, or destroyed by another ghost trying to get a body, which is a vampire. <laughs> So we are sort of doing them a favor, because if they're just stuck on their body where they drop dead, the spirit wardens will be by in less than, in, you know, six hours to get them. And they can't run away from that at all. They're, they're sitting ducks. So we're, we take we're giving them, in. them a train ticket. Yeah. Right, we take them in, give them shelter for a bit. Yeah, we make them fight, but like I said, nothing comes free. And the ones that win, they get to go on without a body. And that, to me, sounds like a much better chance at freedom than being stuck to a body and waiting for the spirit wardens. I think we're all in general agreement. Uh, I don't think that the morality <laughs> yeah. of our decision... So if you could just explain be... that to the scary ghost gang, yeah, yeah, I'm, yes. sure they, uh, I'm sure they, 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 uh, they so, see eye to eye. So the, uh, that's the, that's Armac, the do you yeah. think that, uh, that the reconciled would become a problem for us? Well, I don't really... The thing is, is they're a very secretive group to people who aren't ghosts, right? So I have my my, my contacts, and maybe people who are, who are trying to join the Reconciled or trying to uh, know more about them. I learned about them only about a few months ago. Uh, they, uh, they're they very secretive, and I know very little about them. So... Well, I, do I, don't, think... well I don't see them being uh, an immediate problem. If we we're going to piss them off very very easily uh, with with what we're doing, right? I do think just as a rule, making enemies with organized gangs of free ghosts is probably bad. <laughs> right, <laughs> to be avoided if possible. Sure. Can't please everyone, birth black hats. <laughs> we will do our best. Right, but in general, I think I'd rather be, I'd rather people be pissed off at us than ghosts. Right, people least... can't go through walls. Right, right. But are you can put, put them, them through. through. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> right, but that requires punching. Well, you know, I just want to tell you, uh, just you know, my friends were concerned because they're, uh, they know about, uh. Or what we're doing, and uh, is your well, con is your contact uh, reliable enough to tell us if they may start to make a move? Oh yeah, I can get I can get uh, get a hold of them. Yeah. Now here's a better question: Will he tell us if they start to make a move? I mean, so so the that thing was, is, is they, they care they care for uh, for for my safety, <laughs> uh, but uh, they don't really like what I'm doing. So, you know, there's this the back and forth that maybe they're probably going to help me because I want to, but not going to like how they're helping somebody gamble ghosts and, and their lives going through on a train ticket to not being uh, gathered by the spirit wardens. Maybe yeah, we I don't can... Believe, yeah, they've came maybe... to an event, so they're just judging a book by its cover. Don't know how much fun it is. Vidar, you're... You, you've you been telling us this is sort of the Scarf way of doing things, yeah? Not that this is how it all goes in Scarf land, but there's a certain Scarvishness to the whole thing. 
Uh, yeah, in Skov, they don't have the spirit wardens. We, uh, we have, we have rituals that, you know, were developed after the cataclysm, where you can, you can raise a corpse, uh, or spirit from a corpse properly, so sure, that it doesn't the, go rampant. The fighting, uh, and the honorable death, and the freedom, and all that sort of thing, that's a, that's a, a, a Skovy, Skovy type of thing. Uh, certainly, I, t I think so. Uh, during the war in the winter campaign, when one of us fell, we had a whisper that would raise them back up if they wanted to serve again. Many of their contracts and their, their time that they needed to serve was <laughs> what doesn't happen. That was part you, of it. You that think is not really, it's just a transition in Skov. It's not an end, you know, you think that's just ends. another part of life. Well, we you're right, because get... it, was, it, was, it wasn't like that before the war, so but that would actually... Uh... Do you oh, think fuck. that that maybe we could get a scarf ghost or two to uh you know see our side of fins maybe put the put the word around the spirit circles that that uh you know we're not doing no one no harm sort of thing I I could certainly well, try but the scarves here um there there is a scarf population that's from scarf Right, that came down in the war as refugees or prisoners like me, but um, uh, it's different, right? The emperor has all been here for a thousand years, uh, and the spirit wardens with him, and so Skov mm -hmm. culture here doesn't raise people like they, we do back I in see. Skov. I see. So they, I mean, culturally wise, they're they're very similar to Akaros. So we're uh, we're doing things the old Skov way. Yes, the old Skov way, not the way that the Duskvall Skovs do it, per se. That, they may know they may know the rituals, but they probably have formed. That sounds like something Iron uh, Ironborn would uh, would know a thing or two about. I, if my understanding of him is correct, he would like our, he he would understand. Uh, he sounds like someone who's from the homeland. Sure. Well, maybe so. Just something to keep in mind. Maybe if uh, if the ghost talk gets to be too harsh on us, we can uh, have a word with Ulf and uh, and see what we can if we can work something out between us. Um, oh, I'd I'd like to talk to him certainly. Cassius is gonna clear his throat pretty loudly and say, "Gentlemen, I believe uh, there's something a bit more pressing. Our business is out of fuel, and I think that was." The purpose of today's gathering. Sure. Oh yeah. All right. Well, that's yeah. Well, we need to go to Crow's Foot. Everyone, grab your backpacks and your guns. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> it's, it's I as very much as could be. <laughs> I very much like the approach of. I've been I've been a soldier for almost twenty years. I I'm, this is nothing. I very much like the approach of going as gondoliers. I don't. I do not believe I should should attend with you all. Uh, we not all of Crowsfoot would be fighting. Some of it will be talking. No? That's why it's good to have Cassius in yourself. If right, I, maybe there's someone... Uh... If any of you allow me to die on the job, <laughs> I will okay. come back and haunt you. <laughs> It, madam, well, if you die, I'll do, I'll do my best to perform the ritual to get you back, uh, but I don't know if I'll have the material component. Do you want to set aside some coin for your own resurrection? Now that I would be a hell of a scheme. You are not going to charge me for my own resurrection. <laughs> well, Madam, <laughs> you, you, you as everyone else know that we're broke, so... <laughs> the afterlife has a price. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Vida, I am I am tabling this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, look, I will just tell you now, if you don't plan for it, and then it happens, you would be very sad. Okay. Bilbo, is Vidar a life insurance scammer? <laughs> <laughs> no, in Skov, when you work, some of the money you set aside for your resurrection. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a pride thing. Turn like an, it into a, a turn it into an annuity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't uh, you don't save for a four hundred one k. You're gonna work till you die. But when you <laughs> die, then you can come back and you'll be. You don't have to work. 
So, Stat, a uh, kind of meta question. Mm -hmm. If we were to engage in a score for this, do you want us to table planning now? Because I, th or I mean, like, well, I guess, like, we should try and come to, like, a mutual agreement on what, on how we want to do it. I like, think that going with the gondoliers yeah. as, like, escorts is a really good idea, but I don't <laughs> know if it's viable. So if we can get it to be viable, I think that should be the score. I think sure. it's, I think, it's I, th I, think, I think that's probably part of running the score. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if all else fails, don't we, we still have a coin, right? We can mm -hmm. just wave that, and we can wave that in front of sure, the Sure, yeah, we I'm might sure have to bribe them at first. I'm yeah. sure that will buy us a boat if all else fails. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, I think that's cool. Let's, let's, let's ask some particulars then. So the idea is to meet up with Edric, um, I would presume, being that mm -hmm. you're only contacting the gondoliers. Um, yep. And uh, sort of just say, hey, can you take us around on a patrol tonight? Um, any bodies we find, we'll take care of them for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. More. I think the, the idea was to offer something a little more transactional. Like, it, I suppose in my head, I saw us approaching the normal uh, gondolier muscle and being like, hey, you guys sit this one out. We'll buy your drinks for the night. Just let us, you know. Well, just like they still get paid to do the work, we are just the ones doing the work. Right. We're and then we're we all get we're, the we're offering to put our lives on the line instead of theirs, and in payment <laughs> we get the bodies. Sure. A um, mm -hmm. couple things you don't know heading into it. You don't know how their muscle works. Um, yeah. So that's yeah, something yeah, to try yeah. to figure out a little bit. Um, you don't sure. necessarily know what they do with the spirits um, when they obtain them. Um, something that you do know, however, is that they're kind of like a volunteer firefighter thing. Um, they, people join the lamp, or not the lamp blacks, they join the gondoliers out of like honor, out of like duty. Um, a lot of times mm -hmm. it's like, you know, my grandfather did it. So did my father. So did I. Uh, so it's like, join, yeah. it's like joining the army. Right. So, so they, they might, they, they, they might not be so happy yeah, to sit it out. They daylight, um, you know, different jobs. And then, you know, uh -huh. at night or whatever their patrol is, uh, after they're done gotcha. doing their job, they work as a gondolier. Um, and and gotcha. mo all the citizens love them. Um, you know, they, yep. uh, and they seem to have, the stories seem to lend themselves to, they, they treat ghosts a little bit better than uh, mm -hmm. melting corpses and ectoplasm, which is what the spirit words do. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Cobb, maybe having Edric be our in might be more valuable than finding someone at face value. Yeah, I uh, I think Edric is someone we could talk to. Sure, he's he's not particularly far up in the whole thing. I mean, he's been with him a couple years, but he's certainly not calling any shots. But he can he can tell us who we can talk to, and mm -hmm. certainly he knows who we are. But I like I said earlier, I think I've sort of spent all my good faith with him. So all Edric is is someone whose name we know. Uh, having me there, I think, won't be worth too much anymore. Except that they know I'm a whisper, and that might be worth something to them. All right. Right. This it is gives this some legitimacy. Is, right. This is a business transaction, not a, a favor for a friend. Right. 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 Well, so just just so long as that's clear, then yeah, yeah, I think right. Edric can uh, can can uh, get us a meeting with someone. Is that um, all you need, Stat, or is? Sorry, Bill, if you had something else to say. Uh, I was just gonna. I had a question. Uh, is, so is Edric, you know, is he is he like a you know a worker like the dockers and the grinders are, or are they more, you know, like more religious or fancy folk? I do not rightly know uh, if you have an answer to that. If if Cobb would know. What I, daylights is what you're asking, or what his role in the organization is, right? Oh, he just he's on the boats. Um, he procures corpses. Um, you know, and would that have infant spirits in them, and then brings them back to the whispers uh, that the gondoliers employ to do their ritual. Uh -huh. So I think I wrote him as a dagger islander. Mm -hmm. I'm double checking that right now, but I believe that's correct. In which case, I imagine he is a little more reverent about the whole thing. Yeah, probably. He's kind of bought into the cause, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Sorry, my uh, internet is, or my Chrome is slow. It's interesting that the the gondoliers still continue to operate, even though the spirit wardens have like a you know pretty dead set way of obtaining bodies. Um, you know, being at the dock, sometimes you guys can hear the bells going off in crow's foot. Um, sometimes you know five, six in a night. Um, the death bells, I mean, and uh, the gondoliers, you know, still operate, still try to find bodies before the spirit wardens can. Yeah, so uh, Edric, he uh, he just rides for boats. Um, I'm not sure they've got a strict hierarchy sort of thing, except maybe you know the people they specially train to to paddle and uh, and whispers and that sort of thing. But he, he just rides for boats. But he's a Dagger Islander like me. Probably means he's uh, maybe a bit more sensitive to the ghost field. Never really talked to him about it. How many and, people uh, got on the boats? I I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, but we we did, the two of us we used to trade stories uh, that our parents would tell us about the back home. Um, so I know that he's got a, a sort of reverence about the whole death and, and spirit thing, same as me. And uh, yeah, I, I think that he should not know what we're doing because i don't think he'll like it sure you just have a good lie sure cassius what's our good lie (laughs) (laughs) i'm working on it okay good 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 good. um okay so if you guys would like to do this as a score um i guess your are you trying um I'm just trying to figure out what kind of score bucket this would fall under, right? Well, I think the perception. No, I was going to say, well, the primary portion of the score is crow's foots. It's an assault. It's us, like, beating people off the gondoliers. If if you, yeah, if you are, you know, I guess if we're successful. I mean, that's why I think it's deception. I don't see us not getting this figured out. Is because if it was assault, we'd just be coming in on a boat and saying, like, give the corpses, and then just start, like, fighting people. But, like, since we're coming under the guise of a different faction, I think it's deception. It could definitely lead into that, granted how things go. I I think it's initial start is deception. I feel like the deception will be a, such a small portion oh, of it compared to the it's, combat. It's transport for sure. Oh, Carry yeah. cargo or people through danger. We're not yeah. bringing it in, but the main oh, point of the story is <laughs> you know, that, 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 that is good because that does allow for combat deception. You know, like that. Yeah, allows, right, like, right. Transport is kind of like anything yeah, I think we'll go can with happen. Transport, yeah. Any yeah, chance can happen. Transport, that's transport 100%. Yeah. Because, oh boy, <laughs> is this about to be fun. Um, All right, do you want me to do... I'll do the uh, this the gang sheet for the... Engagement roll, yep. yeah. So, uh, we've got a very strong advantage with Edric being a contact in the gondoliers. Um, anyone else have a another contact that could help get a die for this that they'd like to share with me as I navigate myself to the score? Uh, could I say... Uh... With all the legwork I've been trying to do in Crow's Foot, just following the one lead I have, I've noticed uh, routes that they might be taking or doing. The gondoliers? Yeah. Probably not, I would say. Okay. Um, you I know. mean, could you argue maybe for, like, a concentration of bodies? Or, like, at least just, like, where there was a lot of violence? You must have caught wind of something, of, like, areas to steer clear of. Right, he did talk to a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll give I'll give advice for that. I'll say okay. that's hey. So are we at two with Edric and up to two right now? Okay. Yep. Anything else? I, I know my contacts wouldn't aid in all any of this. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a specific contact. Okay. Um, um I would would you guys yeah. say that this is daring or bold? Yes. Or... Yeah, I mm. daring or bold? One of the two, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh yes. Say... yes. This yes. is very yes. daring. I would say more daring yeah. than bold. So add, yeah. add, add add a die for that. Um, would you say that this is complex or contingent on many factors? Um, no. no. I think it's no, really like contingent on I was going to say the contingent. Yeah, I think, I think it's, sure. it's... This, this is not a complicated piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, are you exploiting a vulnerability? No. No. Okay. So. Of the ghosts, yes. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, is, are the targets you're going after strongest against your approach of transport? 
Probably no, not. they are in fact weak against probably it. Not. Yeah. So probably not. Yeah. It is designed against them. How um, many people in crow's foot can swim? Can I check a census for that? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, asked, we asked about friends. Does anybody have any enemies or rivals that would hinder this? So <laughs> we got, I'm we got putting my I'm, classic. I'm putting my hand up again. Is this gonna happen with every score? <laughs> Yes. Huh? I don't know crazy. who's your who's your. <laughs> I don't. I don't think mine would. Cub. Mine should not. Cub. Okay. Remind me the makeup of Crow's foot. Um. It is a. It's sort of like uh. It's surrounded by canals, right? But it's sort of like a crossroads in Duskfall, right? It connects to four different districts. Um. It is mostly tenements. Um. A lot of different like gang operations happen out of there it's not a huge merchant district or anything like that mostly people just stay there and like like a lot of people pass through like crossroads is a really good way oh, to wait. think about it um i i i lived in crow's foot for a while wow i didn't i didn't realize that okay hang on my my, my things might, might matter more okay. um i guess friends friends and enemies I'm taking okay. one for Cobb's rival, though. Yes, uh, I think okay. yeah. we can maybe talk later about whether it needs to apply to every score. It won't. But I swear, swear to God, for sure. Yeah, I swear to God, if Cobb's, Cobb's rival is himself, I'm gonna is... I'm gonna flip my shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah. So I don't um, know if this. Yeah, mine, mine doesn't. Okay, mine I don't. Doesn't. Uh, I'm sorry, I might be going back a step or something, but I, so Cormac knows, uh, like, alleyways and hidden areas, well, some of them, in Crow's Foot. Do you remember them, though? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. Cormac's age might be getting the best of them. You're right, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it might come in spurts, maybe, maybe you might remember Souls. <laughs> maybe. We had half a dice. <laughs> half a dice. You just get a two. <laughs> you just don't fail. Uh, any other elements you guys want to try and negotiate with me on? I don't think either of my allies or or rivals would have anything to do with this. It's not necessarily a lower tier target, but it's not necessarily a higher tier target. So would gonna... you would you say having anything as far as like connections and heritage in the whaling industry grants any bonus in the canals? I mean, how big are the canals? Are they like big enough for the ships to traverse or no? Not like whaling vessels, but you can get multiple, okay. you know, gondolas. Okay. Okay. Them. So never mind then. Yeah. I don't think so. I think I think we're pretty set on two here. This is risky. This is a tough one. Um All right. so it's yeah. just two dice? Yeah. Yep. Good job. Go for it. Um, I I have oh, uh, uh, n not, this isn't for the role, but okay. before we get too deep into okay, score man. stuff, I want to do a quick RP with Ben. Sure, we'll do that, and okay. then we're gonna cut for a break. So go ahead. It's a perfect oh. way to segue out. All right. Oh, all right. Uh, at some point in time, Vidar is able to get Ben alone. Um, not very hard. Ben's kind of just been in whatever he considers his room or the room with like an ice pack on break. the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he he holds up the spirit bane charm that Madame Raz got him, <laughs> and he Raz. like he like like holds it around his temples on hot you know, or on it Ben. It becomes hot in your hand. All right, I I I pull it back and I say, "You got the demon stink on you. You got to get rid of that." <laughs> yeah, I, I've been. And Madame I've Raz will see you. Wait, what? Say that again. Oh, you took a hit on the lip. That's work enough. I'm proud of you. And he taps him. <laughs> but you, <laughs> but you stink of you stink of a demon, and no one wants to do business with a demon. You got to get that stink off you. All right, uh, I'll I'll try my best. And he uh he he pats him again. He says, "I'll have your back out there. You have mine." All right. And then Vidar goes back. I like it. I like it. Let's take. Uh, he saw some initiative. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's take ten. Um, meet back here around two ten, two eleven ish. Um, uh, I see. Cassius did our engagement roll. We got a yes, four. Yes, you got a four, yep. which is a partial success. Uh, Ooh, it means you'll be does. starting this on a level playing field, basically. Nice. Um, yeah. All right. Let's take uh, ten minutes here and get some food or use the bathroom, whatever you need to do, and we'll convene at two ten or two eleven. All right. All right. Easter time cool. for chat. <laughs> 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 All right. Get get a quick bit of grub. We'll be back. Thanks for watching.